Um, hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to, to be here and tell you about nanorobots. Uh, I don't know how many from you have watched this movie, this 1966 movie. Uh, it's called Fantastic Voyage. Yeah, many? Yeah, good. Great. Uh, so I haven't. So none from our community have watched this movie, but we all talk about that. How can we uh, make nanorobots that will go inside our body? So I will tell you a few things. So in this case, what they, they envision is that we can make small submarines and rank uh, uh, human a troop that will go inside this small submarine. They will put, the doctors will put this into the beans and will just navigate through the body of a US Navy uh, injured uh, patient, and they will cure it. But there are many challenges, right? That was 1966, it's 50, 50 years ago. Like, no one did anything similar, but 10 years ago, we started to think, which are the challenges to, to get there? But if we want to do something that small that will navigate through this very complex environment, we need to look into nature. So we need to learn from there. We need to learn from these micro swimmers. And how do they swim? These are uh, bacteria, this is a cell that moves because of a chemical reaction. If you see here, so it's a tail, it's a flagella that is pushing the cell forward. So there is a conversion from chemistry, chemical environment, into mechanical force, into propulsion. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to learn from nature and then use nanotechnology to fabricate these nanomachines. So the question we address is, do we have the technology to make small submarines? We cannot make humans very small, right? But we can still use chemistry to get propulsion. Okay, so I will tell you some of the things we do in our lab. How do we use our nanotechnology? So this is what we call roll-up nanotechnology, one of the techniques. We hear this morning about how to convert 2D in 3D. Do you remember this video from MIT self-assembly? So we do something similar. We deposit thin films that are pre-stressed. As you can see here, you can deposit. These are real-time images at the bottom where you see rolling up film, thin films. And then you will create tubes. So this will be the chassis, our submarine, okay? Now these tubes you will release into a solution. And then where is chemistry coming into? So you want to convert these tubes into a micro jet, something that moves, a swimmer. What you're gonna do, you're gonna have them, put them into a solution, okay? Where the chemical will be, you will immerse. And then the fluid will come into this tube where the catalyst is. So there's a chemical reaction happening they will generate oxygen. This oxygen will accumulate in bubbles. It will project as a small microjet. Okay, so we already have our submarine. And we are not using anything else but just self-assembly, converting 2D into 3D structures. Okay, so these are self-propelled microjet. But this is not only science fiction. It's not only um, video rendering imaging. So that can become a reality. And that's our reality. Okay, so what you are seeing here are these small tubes it's about the size of a bacteria. Bacteria is about five micrometers in length and probably one micron in diameter. And these are propelled, self-propelled by chemical reactions. That's why we call these nanobots. And a couple of years ago, we got this Guinness record of the smallest man-made jet engine in the world. So the most complicated thing here was to define, what is this? It's a micro swimmer, it's a nanobot, it's a nanorobot, it's a nanomachine. Actually, the Guinness record said this is a micro, uh, like micro jet, because it's creating a jet that is propelling. So what, what is the problem here? The problem is that they go randomly, right? If I give you a piece of paper and you will roll up into a tube, there will be small defects, and this will lead the bubbles to go in different direction. It doesn't matter. We will, I will show you later that we can control the motion. Now, they are self-propelled, they move. And now, the question is, what can they do for us? Okay, so they can actually move particles. They cannot move humans, I told you before, right? But do, you can have these particles loaded with drugs, and then you can transport them from A to B, wherever you want. Okay, so this is very powerful. If you see this small microjet of probably 10 micrometers, it's pushing about 60 particles, and these particles can have a lot of drugs there, a lot of medicine. What else can they do for us? So imagine that you have some cells that are damaged. You don't want them to be there. You can pick them up. See, you can transport very specifically. You put some uh, receptors, and then you can only trap these cancer cells if you want, your damaged cells. You can transport them, and now wherever you want, whenever you want, you can just move, release it, and use it again over and over. 
If you remember in the video before, I, I show you we can make many of them, but actually one is already useful. Okay, now they can move, but then where can they go? Actually, I should say, where could they go, right? The idea is to bring them into the body, but the body is not like a beaker in the lab. It's full of channels, full of flows, but it doesn't matter. They are powerful enough. They can go against the flow. So we have here a microfluidic channel. We can flow particles, so you can see this going against the flow. There's no problem. It's a tubular structure. It can just go against any kind of fluid. Okay, so, and then once they go wherever we want, what can they do? So in this case, this microjet has reached a cancer cell. It's not so clear. Here on this corner, reach a cancer cell and is drilling inside. So if you have this tube full of drugs, you can go near or even inside and you can release the drug. If you talk about size, this is huge, you see? The size of this tube, even though I told you it's about the size of a bacteria, you still need a microscope, is about the size of this cell. So we don't stop in our lab. We want to make them even smaller. And then we look again into nature. We look about bacteria before, right? Now we look at the viruses. So these are our nanorobots on, the, on that corner there. These are small capsules. They look like a virus because they can contain all the genetic material you want. They can contain drugs in the inside, and they still can move. And the nicest thing is that they can actually move and go inside the cell because now the size is much smaller. So we are talking about 50 nanometers. This is 1,000 times smaller than the diameter of our hair. So it's rather small. Okay? It's 10 times smaller than the microjet I showed you one minute ago. So we are going small and small and small in the size. Now, cell-powered, they can go into microfluidic channels, they can go against the flow, they can move particles, but now we need to give some intelligence, right? So to say, they need to know where to go. So there are many ways we're doing our lab, but I'm gonna tell you just one. So they have some magnetic material, and then you can use a magnet, you can steer it, and you can rotate it wherever you want. So you can go from A to B very precisely, okay? But then once they are there, what are they gonna do? So you can have cell, uh, like drugs, and then by changing temperature, by changing light, you will open the gate and you will release the drug wherever you want. Or you can change the pH, open it here as I show you, right, and then release the drug, okay? Um, but yeah, we don't stop. We want to go farther and farther. And I, yeah, we are, so there are many things, right? In the tubes, they are mimicking like swimmers, these ones are very small. What if we combine both things? What if we make a tubular structure which is even smaller than the tubes I showed you before? So what I'm gonna show you here is, what, I, what my aim is to make you hesitate between this video and this video, whether it's artificial or alive. So I want to show you some nanorobots that look like a, a, like a living, living organism, okay? So what do you think is this one? Is, so when I showed this a couple of weeks ago, this is a teaser of the new style, new type of robot that we are doing in our lab. People were saying, oh, this is a bacteria, you have some, some contamination there. But it's actually a microtube that is self-propelled. It's an artificial device that we are doing in our lab. And the cool thing here is that this is fully biocompatible. It can be biodegradable. Actually, it's combining uh, enzymes with uh, artificial part, and they are powered by sugar. So they could now use the fluid that you, we have in our bodies to propel, okay? So I hope in a few months, a few weeks, or one year, I could tell you more about this story, but just this is gonna be, from my point of view, the future of nanorobotics. And it let us dream into what we want to do, the nanorobotics dream. So at least my dream will be have some target drug delivery system. So what does it mean? It means that we have a system, nowadays, the current drug delivery system, they go everywhere, and now what we want to do is to deliver very small amount of drugs wherever we want. And that will allow people like my aunt, who had uh, cancer, right, to reduce her side effects. It was a very huge change, her face, from one place to another, okay? And that means because we can reduce the amount of drugs. So instead of releasing drugs for all the body, we'll just have a tiny amount and we'll deliver to the cancer wherever, wherever it is. Um, so that will, if we talk to politicians or economists, that will lead to a reduce of the cost. Not only the cost of, of pharma, but also the cost of the post-treatment. In any case, our dream 
is to improve the quality of life. Thank you, and thanks for your attention.